Hi, Randy K7AGE, first of many videos about my tower and antenna projects here at our new house in Gold Beach, Oregon, uh, on the southern Oregon coast. I'm one mile from the ocean and 1,100 feet up. The tower and antenna project kind of parallels having our new house built up here in Gold Beach. Um, we moved up here in October of 2015 and working on the designs around the uh, first of the year. And that's about the time that I started working on the plans for how I wanted my tower to go in and kind of an idea of the antennas and such. So uh, all that kind of started in uh, January of 2016, nearly four years ago. As I mentioned, this is the first video. Um, some of the videos you will see are actually videos. Others are uh, stills where I kind of talk through what was uh, happening. Sometimes things happen a little too quickly to uh, deal with the video camera, but I was able to grab a bunch of stills. But uh, I think you'll get the flavor. And as, as I get into more of the uh, actual um, construction and uh, building some of the pieces, I have longer videos involved in, in that. So one of the first things I'm going to show you here is the site plan for the house. The main part of the house is, is kind of a U-shaped with the bedrooms and the legs of the U in the main living area across the front and that points north towards Gold Beach. We can see Gold Beach about four, four or five miles up the coast here. Then off to the right of the house is the garage and across the whole back of the garage is my den ham shack room here. So one of the things I've shown here is that I put in a full perimeter ground system. So this is tied into the electrical ground at the service panel. There's a number six ground wire that goes around the entire perimeter of the house. And then also another wire that will be connected to that that will go out to the tower with all the grounding at the tower. So I followed what's in the Grounding and Bonding book by Ward Silver, it's an ARL book. I highly recommend you get this if you're working on a new installation or working on your antenna system. Uh, I follow this uh, as best as I can. I may not have done everything that's in the book, um, but I think it's a good baseline. Is it perfect? Maybe yes, maybe no. Is it the best? Maybe yes, maybe no. Do I recommend that you build yours this way? That's up for you to take and determine. This is the way I've chosen to put my station together. So back in the beginning of 2016, just about four years ago, one of my first choices was, what do I want for a tower? I basically ruled out any used towers of unknown condition. You know, uh, we've seen several deaths recently, uh, people working on uh, um, older towers, you know, uh, legs corrode from the inside out or they split if there's um, freezing and thawing cycles. Um, just because it's a free tower doesn't mean it's a good tower. So I, I ruled out any used uh, towers. I also don't climb, so I don't want to be dependent on somebody else climbing because it's getting harder to find people to climb, especially in the area that I'm in. So now I'm looking at a tilt-over tower. I kind of looked at maybe a crank-up tilt-over, but you know, the crank-up has a lot of moving parts to it, so uh, I wasn't really uh, enthused about that. Um, along the Oregon coast here, we have high winds. 100 miles an hour is not uncommon, so they tell me. So a lot of the um, ham towers kind of max out around 90, 95 miles an hour. So the tower I chose is from Heights Tower out of Florida, and they offer all sorts of towers, including just freestanding tilt-over crank-ups and combination crank-up and, and tilt-overs. So I worked with them on the, some of the specifications, you know, high wind loading on the Oregon coast. I wanted a modest height, about in the 45 foot range and what they proposed and quoted to me is a tower with about a four to five foot base and the 40 foot piece tilts over and it uses a uh, motor drive with a long uh, threaded uh, rod. The tower is rated for 120 mile an hour winds. They uh, build the tower out of many different sections in their catalog so they can um, size those for whatever the height and wind loading that you require. I ordered the tower in uh, August of 2017 and it took a few months to build and uh, it was ready to ship May 
2018. So these things just don't happen <laughs> overnight. So um, currently the tower is up and we'll show you some stuff about, about that here in the next video or two. So another thing I thought about was how I was going to get the cables from the ham shack out to the tower. So while the house is being built at the right time, Lance, my contractor, says, where do you want that to go? When he had an excavator in and he, he dug the trench, it um, comes from the outside of the uh, ham shack wall where there's a 12 by 12 inch plastic box. And the conduit is about 107 feet long with several bends in it. And after he kind of dug the ditch, he was writing down some notes and he said to me, what size do you want? I said, two inch. And I thought about it for about 10 seconds. I said, change it to three inches. So uh, as you'll see in a later video here, I'm probably glad I kind of changed that because I have a lot of cables go through there. We'll talk about that in a second. So one of the next major choices is what type of antenna for HF, for high frequency, am I going to put on the top of the tower? There's so many to choose from. You know, there's hundreds of them out there. Um, if you're a real big contester or DXer, you're probably going to get some big, big antennas. Uh, I do a little of that, nothing serious, but I wanted some gain and some directivity, but I wasn't interested in something big. Because with the tower tilting over, half of the boom length is from the boom to the ground. So let's say you had a 30-foot boom when the tower's tilted over, it's going to be 15 feet above the ground. So you're going to be working on a, on a ladder to work to get the antenna mounted onto the mast. So I, I didn't want to do that. There are several manufacturers that build a similar antenna. Um, and what this ends up being is two elements. So it's not going to be a, a high gain antenna or a tremendous directivity, but two elements is a, a good basic small beam. But it's an antenna optimized with two elements on 20, two on 17, two on 15, two on 17, two on, two on 24, two on 10, and optionally six meters. So there's several manufacturers that build this type of antenna. And what's kind of nice about it is that it's short. It's a 12 foot boom. So now when the tower is tilted over, it's only six, seven feet off the ground. So we're not up on a high step ladder or something like that to, to work on the antenna. So the antenna that I chose is a Navassa 5 from JK Antennas. They uh, build basically the exact meme that I just mentioned. It's 12 foot long, weighs about 50 pounds, um, pretty high. I think it's rated for 100 mile an hour winds. Um, got lots of good reviews in uh, Eham. And uh, I talked to a couple of people, uh, friends of mine that were, that were familiar with them, and they said that Ken builds a good antenna, uh, a lot of nice mechanical pieces and, and uh, parts on it. In fact, I do have the antenna. I haven't started assembling it yet, and I have a, it's a big box of aluminum, and there's many sealed plastic bags with the hardware that's required for that section of the manual when I start to build the antenna. So I've decided on my tower, my antenna, my grounding system, I have my three inch conduit going out to the tower. Now, what am I gonna put up there besides the Navassa 5 beam? Well, I'm gonna have a at least a 40 and a 80 meter dipole, so that's two coaxes, total of three. Um, I'm gonna put a Diamond X50 uh, UHF VHF vertical on the top and one of the reasons I've chosen that is that it's a, a a single stick construction some of the higher gain ones are multiple pieces that you assembled so in the high wind I want for a single piece um, I like to have a good two meter beam and uh, I don't know what else so that starts to be a lot of coax and planning so kind of a side note here Back during my uh, long summer vacation, <laughs> I did visit DX Engineering this, this past summer and met with Tim Duffy there. And, uh, you know, I spent some time at the store and the next day out at his ham shack. And one of the things that, that Tim said is that DX would like to supply me with the coax and the connectors and the crimp tools that I'd be using to assemble the antenna here. And uh, in exchange for uh, me showing you how how to work with these and and uh, and how they worked out uh, for me, and um, 
And I said to him, well, let me go home and make sure I got my plans figured out before we come up with a parts list. So I had an idea how many antennas on the top. So I drew up a drawing here and I thought, okay, I'll kind of build it like I did back in Grass Valley on the HF side, one coax from the shack to a tower mounted uh, antenna switch. And uh, back in Grass Valley, had the antenna switch at the bottom of the tower, and uh, so you don't have to work on it up at the top. Um, so I kind of modeled that um, uh, scenario here at first. So one coax going out, um, and then and then a coax for the um, for the beam, the 40 meter, and the 80 meter dipole. Then coaxes all the way up to the top of the tower for the two. Uh, two meter, 70 centimeter vertical, and another coax for the two meter beam. So, um, and of course a spare. So that's a lot of coaxes. And uh, so I worked on a drawing here and a uh, spreadsheet which shows all the runs and all the connectors. And it got to be pretty extensive. And then I started thinking that, you know, many of the new radios now, have basically multiple receivers with multiple antenna inputs. And you can do some nice trick things if you have multiple an antennas connected to the radio. Well, having a single coax going out the antenna switch kind of rules that out a little bit. So I changed my design and I thought I'm gonna home run all the coaxes from the shack up to the top of the tower without using the antenna switch. So it ends up uh, being six coaxes from the uh, house to the uh, base of the tower, and then at least five going up. There's a spare coax. Um, I haven't really planned on a spare going up the tower just yet, but who knows? Um, 953 feet of coax and uh, at least 22 PL259 connectors. So uh, with that many connectors, I'm not gonna be soldering. I'm looking forward to trying crimp connectors for the first time. So one of the other things I looked at with my system design is loss through the coax. Now all coax has loss. Generally, the larger the diameter of the cable is, the less loss, the little thin stuff you get has higher loss. So DX Engineering uh, agreed to supply me with their branded cable, their DXE uh, 400 Max. And what I did was enter this into a, a spreadsheet. So if you look in the... Uh, in their catalog, you'll see different attenuation figures for different frequencies. So also, the higher you go in frequency, the more loss of the cable. Lower frequency, less loss. So let's take a look at what happens here. When we look at this. So at five megahertz, it's 0.3 dB of loss per 100 feet. So I have, I estimate about 170 feet from the uh, back of the radio up to the top of the tower. So I built this spreadsheet where I can enter in the, the length of the cable and it says at five megahertz at 0.3 dB per hundred, I end up with 0.51 dB loss over the 170 feet. So. If we think of that as power in to power out, you know, if I put 100 watts into the coax and the output of my transmitter, I should have 89 watts up at the top of the tower at, at the beam. So there's 11 watts being wasted in the coax. Now, if you want less loss, you gotta go bigger coax, bigger coax, bigger bucks. Uh, 10 megahertz, 0.5 dB, loss per 100 ends up being 0.85 for the length of my run, and that's 82 watts out. Uh, if we look up at 30 meters, close to you know, the top of the 10 meter band, it's 0.8 dB loss per 100. That's 1.36 dB, so now my 100 watts only gives me, and ends up with 73 watts up at the top of the tower. Now, some people may say, oh my God, you know, how are you gonna be able to work? Back at my station in Grass Valley, I probably had 300 feet of cable and I never really noticed it. Now, if I did an AB between the far tower and the near tower, yeah, maybe, but it'll work, it'll work. Uh, six meters, 1.1 dB, uh, 1.87 dB loss total. And now my 100 watts ends up being 65 at, at the antenna. 
I'm starting to heat up the coax quite a bit. Now, for my two meter stuff, it's 1.8 dB per 100, so I have 3.06 dB at the end of the 170. So, every 3 dB is a, is, so 3 dB is half power. So, my 100 watts in, 49 watts out. 3 dB, losing half. Now, the killer is on 450. 3.3 dB per 100 feet, I'm going to have 5.6, almost 6 dB. So my 100 watts, if I had 100 watts on 450, will be 27 watts coming, you know, at the base of, of the antenna. And don't forget, it works on receive too. Your receive signal strength uh, is attenuated uh, coming back. Am I concerned about the 450? Not really. Um, there's a few repeaters in the area. I'm not trying for an ADX. Two meters, I'm going to put up a, a longer beam. So, but uh, I think that'll suffice. I think I'll be be happy and have fun with that. So, um, it's a question I get quite often with my antenna projects: is uh, you know what type of coax, how far can I run it? Uh, well, it, it all depends. How far you're going to go? Uh, what size coax? How what type of coax you can afford to use, how much power you're running, and etc. So, um, anyway, um, DXE uh, 400 max cable is uh, what I'm going to be putting in about 950 feet of here. So that ends it for today. I, you know, if you enjoyed this, uh, please give me a, a thumbs up. Um, um, I'm also on Twitter. You can follow me on K7AGE. If you've been following me, you've been seeing uh, some photos over the last year of, of the project here and such. So uh, the next video will be, we'll go out and play in the dirt. Stay tuned. This is Randy, K7AGE.